we jump over to the actual watercolor paper, what we've got here is a sheet of my own brand of watercolor paper. This particular paper is uh, Matthew Palmer's watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, not surface. Um, which is 300 gram. It's cotton, beautiful paper. Just do a quick search on the SAA website for um, the Matthew Palmer watercolor paper. You'll find it. It's beautiful stuff. It's got a lovely texture. It's made in France. It's really nice paper. This I've stuck it to a board on all four sides, and it's ready. And I want to create this scene from scratch, total from scratch, live. No pressure. We've got some paints and brushes over here. I'm very lucky that working with the SAA, I've got my own um, materials that I can use. We have uh, a range of my watercolor paints down here. The ones I'm probably going to be using more than any are natural grey, the two natural greens. The greens are designed to replicate nature. We've got primary colours. Now, you could just do this painting with primary colours, not a problem. You've got natural blue, natural red, natural yellow light. We've got some natural brown and some natural white as well. Because I'm painting this live from scratch, it's all kind of, you know, happening at the point of, you know, as it happens, winging it kind of thing. Brushes wise, we've got my own range of brushes, Matthew Palmer brushes here. We've got super point large. Uh, medium and small which is a size 20, 10 and 6. I'll be using those a lot through this demo. We've also got a few other bits and pieces that we'll, we'll bring into this. I love a bit of detail me so we've got Matthew Palmer's branching detail brushes. Look at these, these are beautiful brushes. Really really nice brushes for getting that fine detail in. Um, we've got some of the fantastic brushes which we'll talk more about later and there's a way you can get hold of these for free actually. So we'll talk about that very shortly. So these are the fantastic brushes here that we've got, the uh, large, medium and small. We've also got the tree and texture brushes, uh, which we'll possibly bring into this. These are the ones that started it all for me way, way back in the late 90s. Matthew Palmer tree and texture brush, beautiful for stippling and creating foliage effects. So a bit of an English kind of themed landscape is what we're going to go down. Um, so this is a demonstration so i'll be working at a pretty quick pace but remember you can actually you know you can drop back on this any time it'll be on facebook it'll also be on my youtube channel as well links in the description for all that uh, so you can actually uh, re-watch this thing as much or as little as you like pause it skip it on waffle past all this if you want to do all that stuff of course you can because it will be a little bit like watching paint dry maybe but anyway, I think we should probably get started uh, before we do anything else. So I'm just going to grab a pencil and do a little bit of a sketch for this one. I want to start off with a pencil and a ruler. Now I'm going to, in my mind, divide this into thirds, roughly into thirds. And that's going to really help things along here. So let's just get this ball rolling here. Where's my mouse? I've lost my mouse because for some reason I'm upside down. My hands are at the top, should be at the bottom. We can fix that though, can't we? <sighs> Don't you love live streaming? Right. Anticipation's off the fun. That's better. Now we're cooking on gas. We're actually facing the right way. Am I facing the right way here? Am I facing the right way there? Yes, I am some reason that was facing the wrong way but anyway there we go i was thinking this is a bit odd but anyway there we go <laughs> we've got a ruler and i'm going to mark in very loosely one third of the paper and all these years of live streaming that's never happened before that was the first time one two three so in my mind i want to sketch in this very weak pencil line a third of the way up so i want to go through the sketch with you as well today pop that in there Stick that on there, and then what we'll do next is we're going to have a little bit of a mound coming in here. So from this left corner, we're going to go up a little bit here, and we're going to bring this thing up. I'm going to sweep down like so. So you can see I've gone up and down past that original line, and then we are going to do a little bit of a zigzag coming this way. You'll see where we're going with this a little bit later. And then slightly above this, we'll do another line and do another zigzag coming around here, like so. 
Now, from these little zigzag lines, we're going to go up towards the background on a bit of an angle. So we can see the little angles we've created, little little lines that shoot up. OK, now I don't necessarily have to fill the page. I could do this in a vignette style. Um, then over here on this horizon line, let me zoom in a bit closer for you. We're going to sketch in a little bit of a building here. It's going to be sat on this horizon, as it were. And we'll pop this in. We'll pop that in there. We'll get the line going up. Now that's probably about an inch ish, give or take. We can get a little bit close in. And come across and we're gonna get a little bit of an old sort of cottage coming down. Let's have another line going up here. These lines are just vertical by the way. Can't go wrong with that. Work across here. Again, another and then just drop it back like so. So these lines are going to be in on this little building. We'll pop in the chimney. We'll have a little bit of a chimney. Three lines for the chimney. A bit close in so you can see. And we'll go for that. Now what I'll do in a minute is I'll leave this on screen so you can see the actual um, screen and you can see a close up of the actual um, sketch. OK, so I'll pop this in. OK, and I'm just going to mark in a couple of little windows and things in here for this cottage. Little rectangular shapes. Now I am sort of doing this as a demo, so just bear in mind if this was an actual workshop, we'd be taking a little bit more time. But this is a demo. But remember, you can rewatch this thing. So if you're trying to paint along live, sometimes it's good just to watch and then, you know, sort of do at your leisure. And we're going to do this. Pop a little, stick a little doorway on as well. A nice, simple, straightforward sketch. If I just slightly darken the screen, we can do that all at the point of being live. That'll help you see the sketch a little bit, okay? So just going to slightly darken the screen a little bit there. If I come back with a camera, hopefully you can see that entire page. Now I am going to leave an edge. I'm not working all the way to the edge. So I'm just going to lose a couple of inches on the sides here. Because I love painting vignettes, I was... Lots of people call them vinaigrettes. So I'll take some of those, those lines away. What's a vinaigrette? Well, this is a vinaigrette I did last week on a workshop. This is a badger in a bluebell water. That lovely faded edge, beautiful, very nice watercolour vibe going off there. So I love that faded edge. Can we do one of them vinaigrettes, Matthew? I like them. My mum says, I love them vinaigrettes that you do, Palmer. I love them. Yeah, she just called me Palmer, strangely. And then in the background, we'll have some little little sort of hills, mountains or something. Give it a bit of a landscape. And that's going to make a nice composition. I want to get a tree here. Some trees coming up here as well. That's going to make a lovely L-shaped composition. So if I leave that on screen, um, hopefully you can see what we've got. So it all started off with a horizontal line about a third of the way up. But where is your light coming from? About a third of the way up, that was um from the bottom and then we went a bit higher drop down and this is going to be a bit of a a bit of a stream a bit of a river maybe we could potentially reflect this later on we'll we'll talk about this just kind of stick with us through this um which all works rather nice let me make sure the screen is nice and clear for you hopefully you can see it all there you go so that's the sketch that's the sketch that we've got now I did mention popping some trees. I'm going to have a bit of a silver birch tree, maybe a couple of silver birch trees coming up there, which means I do actually want to do something a little bit different. So feel free to take a screen grab of this. If I turn the board over, tricky bit. I've got a piece of one inch masking tape and I'm going to use a knife to cut some little thin strips down there. So you can almost cut it into thirds. Obviously getting parents permission before you do that. But can you see that's a nice little thin bit of masking tape? It's probably, it's around a centimetre in width. Turn this back over, tricky bit. And what we'll do is we'll pop this on here. Like so. So I've creased it a little bit, get your fingers in, get your fingers into a little bit, give it some 
give it some character. It doesn't want to be too precise here. So I'm using my fingers to crease it in. Can you see? Now that's going to keep the paper nice and white. Beautiful. Can't go wrong with this. Bring it in. We'll get another one of these little strips. Pop that one there. That's where you want to be sticking it. Again, crease it a little bit. Get your fingers in. Get your fingers in. Give it some character. Take away the harsh sharpness. So that's your sketch. That's your sketch. And that's your uh, that's your little bits of masking tape stuck down. Again, do a screen grab, whatever you want to do. It's all there. So, big brush, size 20 brush, and we're going to wet the entire paper. I just want to mention this briefly. I've got a bit of kitchen paper loitering around in case I start crying. It's quite emotional, this painting, you know? <laughs> a few tears. So I'm just going to use water. This is Derbyshire water. I'm going to make sure that tape's stuck as well. And I'm wetting the, the top section right down. <clears throat> So the entire sheet of paper is getting water on here. It'll grow on you, trust me, you can't go wrong. So again, I want to work at a pretty sort of demo pace here. So if you're trying to keep up, great. If not, just re-watch it later, enjoy it. So that's got a couple of coats of water on. And then we can paint in some kind of a sky here. So I've used a big brush, a size 20. This is one of my super point brushes, beautiful brushes. You can see why they're called super points. Um, that's had a good coverage. And then we're going to paint in a little bit of a sky with a slight evening vibe. That brush to me is too big. I'm going to pop that away. That was just there for wetting. So I'm using a size 10 brush here. And I want to add a little bit of warmth to the base of the sky. So for this, I'm just going to take a little bit of natural red which is obviously a primary colour. You could use a little and crimson here, a little bit of red, and just a little bit of a sweep up here from the back of these, these, um, these trees. Get plenty of colour around the base of the trees, folks. A bit of an evening vibe would be quite nice here. So that little bit of a pinky red. Um, it's always good to tap the excess on the tissue as the, no, I'll stop. Um, if you bring that in, and then we'll clean the brush again. Back to the palette and this time we'll take a bit of blue you can't beat a bit of blue can you on a tuesday at 2 p.m there's some blue natural blue beautiful color beautiful natural blue a little bit stronger than the red a bit of a tap on tissue let's pop in a bit of a, a sort of sky going in here again plenty of color work it in get plenty around these these birch trees birch trees bring it in let it mix, you get a bit of a purple vibe. Now, like I say, folks, I'm not doing the whole picture because I want to go for a vinaigrette. I do like painting vinaigrettes. I think they're nice vignettes. I like the soft faded edge of them. What are you talking about? Beautiful, simple, clean, uninterrupted sky. Nothing too, you know, fancy there. Clean brush. What we'll do next is we're going to add a little bit of that colour to the water. Because remember, we, we have added water to the whole scene here. So on this little sort of stream, we're going to pop some little horizontal lines of the pink at the top. Clean brush. There's your blue. There's nothing stopping you doing this in two sections. You're doing the top section, chilling out, coming back and doing the bottom section. But, you know, living life to the full and all that. We're going to go for it. So we'll get the blue in as well. Just sweep that across. Again, you can see I've let it all kind of fade in. I'm, I'm leaving the paint to fade to do its thing. I want it just to, I want it to do its own sort of magic, if you like. I want it to fade into the, to the surrounding area. I'm just gonna pop that brush away. Picking up a size six brush or a small super point here. Natural grey, which is the colour that started it all for me. This was the first colour that I designed. And it is the colour of nature. It's a beautiful colour. But a couple of little... It's basically shadows. Everything's got grey shadows. Well, double chin shadows. 
it's all grey. All this darkness you see around here is all grey. Fifty Shades. Grey. A bit close in, we can get close in here, can't we? Let's just add a little bit of a twisty... Because it's an English landscape, and you've got to have some grey clouds. So let's just pop in some little twisty clouds. I'm literally rotating the brush here, moving it along. Now, if anyone happens to have my sky and cloud brushes, great thing to use right here. The small one would be beautiful for doing these. I love that little bit of a softness that you can create on a nice quality paper. If your paper's a bit dry, I probably would leave the clouds off at this point. Um, I am tickling the brush on tissue. And a little bit of a, a little bit of a twist, the brush. You can't go wrong, can you? Beautiful. The paper's just, just workable. But I love that little bit of. It's almost giving like an evening kind of sky vibe to that. Beautiful. What you can do here is clean your brush, wipe it pretty much dry, and then you can sort of soften any hard edges away. Wipe the bottoms of the clouds. Yes. You heard that right. Give it a bit of a tickle. As long as your brush is not too wet, it won't cauliflower. Lovely little, little clean, uninterrupted uh, watercolour sky there. Nothing too fancy, nothing too complex. Just nice and simple. Nice and straightforward. Looking down here on the landscape at this point then, what I want to do is add a little bit of background foliage and a little bit of work down here at the same time. So with a size 10 brush, size 10, with that same grey, while the paper's a bit damp, it's good to tap it on tissue. We can paint in some distant hills, mountains, whatever you decide they're going to be. The grey will create a lovely sense of distance and depth. Just pop a little bit of that in. Natural green light. I'm using a light green. Again, all the materials we use are available on the SAA website, folks. Again, links are down below in the description for this video. Now, obviously, you can mix your own green, but that one is natural green light. Well, we'll sort of bring a bit of that in. We'll mix it with the grey. On the paper, that is. So I'm mixing on the paper here, and that will create a lovely sort of distant feeling with a bit of light coming through. So you can see it sort of mixing in. You, you put as much character as you like into this. If your background is still really wet, it probably won't be, but if it is, then I'll just give that a little bit of time just to just to soak in. Be a little bit cautious not to go over the building with that green. But a great thing here is to encourage the paint to mix on the paper. You can see that the grey is mixing. Every time I stick my brush in the grey, it mixes with the green and vice versa. And that's a good thing. That, that means that you're getting a lovely bit of sort of control to this. We can bring this right down and start to work in front of the building as well. There's nothing saying we can't get a bit more grey on the brush. Just to add a bit more shadow and various things. But as we start to work lower down, obviously the paper is, is almost at that stage where it's pretty much bone dry. We need to decide at this point what we're going to do over here. So we're going to start to work around this corner here. Now it makes sense to do this. So let's have a look at some colours. We've got natural green. That's the light green. We're going to go for the dark green as well. So you've got natural green light and natural green. Two colours designed to replicate nature. You can mix your own greens. One's more blue than the yellow, basically. And if we use these two colours, we can start to work around here. Start to work in front of this building here. Now, obviously we'll be adding more work to this as we progress through the picture here. Working all the way around this water's edge. Now I shall put some detail. I'm just using the lighter of the two colours here. 
at this stage. It's kind of mixed a little bit with the grey still, but that's okay. It's all, all part of it. I've got that darker green there as well. Beautiful on the darker green, which I've picked up without cleaning the brush. That's all part of what you want to be doing here. Let your paint all mix together. I'm using a size 10 brush or a medium super point for this. Beautiful. And we'll bring it in. Can't go wrong with this. Let it just sort of do its thing. Let it just disappear into the landscape a little bit. It'll grow on you. Trust me, I'm an artist. It'll be fine. Bring it in. Bring it in. And then let's just take a sneaky bit of grey. Sneaky bit of natural grey. Stay with me. A little bit of grey. Again, I haven't cleaned the brush. I've just got a bit of grey on that brush. I haven't cleaned it, just as is. And then just going to pop in a little bit of grey on the edge. Almost working up from where we imagine the water's edge to be, going in towards the, the landscape. You could use a bit of water here, clean the brush really well. Wipe it almost dry and just give this a little bit of a blend on the end just to make it look as though it is a vinaigrette vignette. So it's got a bit of softness. At the same time, you can dampen this down a bit. You can make sure that it all blends in. It's all working together. And the reason we want it all, all to work together is because I want to sneak this. Now, this is a, I want to show you the name of the hotel. It's a key card from a hotel that I acquired. It's a plastic card. I want to use this to pop some little markings into this area. If we get close in, because we can do that, we'll pop this on here and we're going to scrape the paint up. Now, can you see where the paint is gathered here? Have a go at this. It's a lovely little trick um, and it's a great way to get shape into your landscape. And every time I do it, I'm wiping off. I'm putting pressure here. I'm putting pressure in the corner as I do this. And it will create a little bit of a shape it shouldn't need much pressure to do this. And one thing not to do is to get a bit aggressive with it because all you'll do is destroy your paper at that point. So we're being quite sort of gentle here. And we can see we're creating a bit of a, a bit of an edge, a bit of an edge to this. Perfect. So you can see how we've created a little bit of shape and at the, the same time, we've got a bit of depth as well. So, so working along with the sky and working along with the, Just making sure that the colours are okay here for you. I hope they are. They seem to be all right at my end. Hopefully you can see a lot of nice looking. We've started to create the scene already. The sky, the masking tape still present. Perfect. This is all blending. It doesn't matter if a bit of green creeps into your water. It's all part of what it is. Let it, let it do its thing. Let it become part of it. Now, I shall be working over this side, but we don't want to be doing that until we've, we've removed the masking tape. But if you imagine a tree, a tall tree, there's going to be leaves at the back and leaves at the front. So what we want to do is put a bit of both in. Now at this point, you've got an option. You could either use uh, Matthew Palmer Tree and Texture Brushes. Beautiful. This is the large one, for example. Really nice. Very popular brushes. Been around for years. Like me, really. And... Oh, we could use the fairly new, and these are beautiful things, Matthew Palmer Fantastic Brushes. Now, if you like the looks of these, these are fan brushes with steroids. These look nice, nice, thick, juicy brushes. Really nice. Quite, look, look at that. Let's do a close-up. Let's do a shopping channel rotation. There you go. Beautiful. It's a fan brush with a thick head. Right. Let's have a look at sticking a bit of foliage on. All this is pretty dry, which is really good. This is what I want it to be. So what we've got then is the large fantastic brush. In the water, not, not too wet. And I'm gonna use a mixture of the two greens here. In fact, now I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's let's live life dangerously. We are live. Sod the expense. What we're going to do is damp. One side of the brush is going to have the dark green on. 
here and the other side is going to have the light green on steady steady on palmer slow down and i don't you can see that brush but one side's got a lighter green than the other probably make that out and we can utilize that on this picture pushing your boat out today aren't you over here a bit of background foliage straight down the difference between these fan fan brushes and a standard fan brush is the random edge yes but also the width the width of them they're very wide at the top you can see that on the screen so if we sort of rock the brush a little bit you're going to get some light foliage and look at that remember you can get these with your saa membership thrown in so if I want a bit of dark, I'll just rock the brush that way. Let's just tilt it so you can see. There you go. Beautiful. And all it wants is just little gentle taps. Now all this is at the back of the tree. And it'll really frame the picture quite nicely. You can come as far across as you, top, as you like at the top of your picture. But it's all going to help get plenty of colour around there to really make it sort of stand up a little bit and you can just sort of tap these bits in here get plenty of colour nice and close now, as well as these brushes being good for you know for trees and foliage they're also good for you know animal fur um that kind of thing so we'll sort of get that coming down here nice overhanging tree part of the landscape now at the bottom of the tree obviously i've took this all the way down i don't want it to be all the way down i want to decide where i want my trees to to end if you like or begin so probably about halfway in this mound is where i want to be so if we just kind of do something like that that'll give me a chance to paint in this area at the bottom and not be too concerned about having to paint around the base of the tree so on this area we can get some colors in now it's all dry down here it's all good it's all where we want to be and we can use a similar technique to what we used over this side we can use the plastic card but we'll go the opposite direction when I did the sketch at the beginning of this demo I sketched in these little lines that went up here which is what I want. Um, size 10 brush would be great for this. Or a medium super point. We'll come back to those brushes a bit later. The fantastic brushes. Let's get some natural grey. Because you need a bit of natural grey in there, don't you? That's your shadow. If you struggle to mix grey, you can mix grey from primary colours. I'll mention this. So, when I first started watercolour painting, I only used... Sorry, when I first started teaching watercolour painting, I only used three colours, blue, red and yellow. These are the primary colours, natural blue, red, yellow, light. If you mix about 70% blue with about sort of 10% red and 20% yellow, you'll get that grey. But when I started teaching, I soon realised that people had a problem with getting the exact colour every time. And grey is such a widely used colour. For example, if you look at the Kingfisher, you wouldn't associate that with grey, but there's grey in it because under the wings here, in the branch, in the beak, in the eye, it's all grey. Shadows are so important, aren't they? They really are. Um, and this is the right grey for the right uh, job, basically. Let's get back to palette. Back to palette. We've got the strong grey, medium ish grey. Worth picking up a tube of that grey, folks, if you've not already. Then we want some uh, green, the light green, which is here. In fact, we'll mix that with a little bit of the dark green. We'll have the dark green on its own. And then just for a little bit of variation, for a bit of variation, let's drop in some natural brown. Again, you can mix brown from primary colours. If you mix up a rusty orange and drop in a bit of blue, it will go brown. Okay, but we can use natural brown. Not much of that, but a little bit. It'll break up the green. It'll break up the green. So we've got medium strength grey, natural green, the darker one, the lighter green with a little bit of the darker chucked in and some brown on side. Beautiful. We'll start with the grey. We'll start with the grey. 
and we want to go along this edge. Now I want to rotate the board a little bit here. Don't want to rest on my, my trees if I can help it. So I'm just going to add some grey along this edge here. Natural grey going in. Now if you want to watch me do this first and then you can do it yourself afterwards, you can always pause the video, can't you? For that. We'll bring that across like so. When I teach virtual workshops, I do, you know, really take my time. I give you time to work on those. There's one coming up this weekend, actually. It's Sunday the 23rd. We're painting a uh, a Tuscany vineyard, a vineyard in Tuscany. Um, and that is on my website. And that's a virtual um, workshop, which means that you sit along and paint along at home and they are such good fun. The badger I showed you at the start, that was done a few days ago in one of those virtual workshops. And I reckon a lot of you people watching here have probably taken part in those. So I'll put the grey on. I have then moved into the green. This is the lighter of the two greens. Okay. Let's pick up a bit more of that colour. And I'm I am mixing the colours together. Now I've used the darker green on this on this top edge here because I want it to stand forward against the background I want it to look as though it's closer to us and having it darker will give that effect the brown that we mentioned is there just to drop in a little bit because I think it gives variation it gives a bit of earth it gives a bit of sludge a bit of dirt that kind of thing not as though that's the sort of thing that you probably want to paint really a bit of sludge but it's it's true it is there it's part of what we want here and of course the masking tape is still there doing its job at the back and that's as far as I want to go with the picture now all this is going to have shape and texture but if you're trying the plastic card technique yourself and you've always had problems with the paint drying on you I've got a little tip to help you out on that one because if the paint's dry here you can't easily use that effect where you you get the plastic card scrape off because it's too dry basically so you just reactivate it rather than get aggressive with it and get angry with it and start to scratch your paper like crazy just casually have a sip of your budget mineral water this is not Buxton it should be shouldn't it really this is Chris crystalline mineral water may con may contain traces of nuts So it smelled a bit nutty. <laughs> Clean the brush, a couple of taps on tissue. And what we're going to do here is use a little bit of water, dampness. This is damp water. You could buy that on April Fool's Day. Came out for one day. Matthew Palmer's damp water. <laughs> because I'm talking to myself, I have to keep myself entertained. So I have very simply reactivated it um, with that size 10 brush it's also worth making sure that the back edge so I'm laughing about nutty water now there you go is a little bit soft on the edge like me and then we'll use the plastic card we'll go this way let's get close into this so you can see what we're doing here Now I'm actually putting the card flat and I'm going up to create shape. You can do as many of these as you like really. What's nice is that it leaves a residue of some of the colours, so like a bit of the yellow from the green stays with us. Now if you're doing this and it's not coming off, it's because it's too uh, because it's too dry. That's when you just dampen it a little bit. Just reactivate it a little bit, keeping the paint flow in here. Because watercolour never permanently dries, you know, you've got to remember that one, it doesn't sort of go off permanently. That was alright, isn't it? So we've got a mound, we have a mound. Now this is going to be balanced up with dark colours over here. Talking about dark colours actually with a size 6 brush. We can use that now um, with some of the grey, the grey, 
just the grey, nothing else, and actually a little bit closer in over here, just to start to bring in a little bit of shadow into these edges. Because I want this to balance. I want to get a bit of balance to the picture. So I'm just using a bit of dark from the palette. And I'll be honest, even if that was a bit of brown, it wouldn't really matter. But I'm just going to bring it in. We'll get a bit more movement in the water later. Beautiful. Um, and just a few little bits of shadows and things. Just little flicks. Little flicks in one direction. I've seen both of them. Little flicks and one direction. I won't normally admit that, but I have. I think it was an X, X Factor Tour of 2000 and something. I got dragged willingly. Got dragged to it. X Factor Tour. Is it Little Flicks? Or is it Little Mix? Little Flicks is the cheap version of Little Mix. What are you, what are you talking about, Palmer? What are you talking about, Palmer? You're full of flannel. It's that water. That's what it is. The water. Let's just get a little bit of the line across here as well. Beautiful. I love how that balances things up a little bit. I'll come back a little bit with the camera. That nice pink in the sky. It's in the water as well. We're going to get some terracotta roofs over here. But let's just leave all that to sort of dry a little bit. I'm looking forward to getting the tape off. That's where we're coming stuck. Um, we're going to use the size 10 brush here. It's getting, it's getting a bit surreal in the studio today. We've got some of the grey. I've diluted the grey. I've added water to the grey. Not the nutty water, just the normal water. Straight from the tap. I want to put some shadows and some shape into the distant hills. Most common question, most common question we get asked when we do demonstrations at art groups. Not that we do many of them now, but you know, we used to. Where, where's your light coming from? That's what I want to call my autobiography. Or, did you wet it first? Is it mirror? Is it moist? Let's just bring it in. Oh, that's what this is. Let's just bring that down. We'll get right up. This is just the pale grey. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? The one thing I learned, well, one of the many things I learned about teaching painting holidays. There's a few, there's a few things I learned about teaching painting holidays in location. One of them is to make sure that wherever you're painting, there's some uh, toilets, some what? Toilets, some, some toilets where you're painting and you can get some food. Because that's the first thing people say to me when we do these uh, painting holidays. That, They'll pick the phone up and they'll say, Matthew, we're on a book of painting holiday. But can I ask you a question? Number one, can I get some food where I'm painting? And number two, is there any uh, any toilets where you're painting? Any what? Toilets. Anyway, I was just saying that the one thing I learned about this is that you don't worry on, on big objects like mountains and hillsides. You don't worry about where light is because light does what it wants. On a building, on a small object, different. And the people that say to me, where's your light coming from? Doesn't really... It's not a question that is important always, especially as a beginner, you know? But I put the darkness on the left side here. We could push the boat out and use the tip of the brush to get some little... Maybe some sort of trees or something in the background there. But I want to use water, just water, wipe the brush almost dry, and then we'll soften this in. We're going to soften it in. Now, you can see I've been a bit cautious not to go too much over the top of the old, uh, the old cottage there. So we'll just kind of scribble all that together. And that gives us a little bit of, you know, a little bit more shape, a little bit more form to this. Do you know what I mean? We've got some ducks in the water. Let's use that. Let's use the same grey, exactly the same grey. Just again on the tissue. Same brush as well, to be fair. And let's just pop in some little horizontal lines in the water. Let's start to get some movement in your water. Horizontal lines of a pale grey would be a good start. We'll get some greens in there. We'll reflect the trees when we get to them a little bit later on. You can't go wrong. Turn the board that way. I'm doing these in one direction, and yes, they are little flicks as well. So we're going to come across. 
Now I'm using this brush, I mean you can see it's quite pointy. It's a super point brush at the end of the day. Now if you like this kind of work, if you like my kind of teaching, this is another good reason that you want to be in the SA because as part of your membership you get access to loads of video tutorials and there's a lot of me on there to enjoy. Painting, and there's no jokes in there, they've all been cut out by Gary. You need to have words about that. I'm joking by the way. We're going to work this in. And if you like my style of painting, like the stuff I showed you, the badger, and you think to yourself, you know something, I'd really love to have a go at doing something like this. Well, this is when you want to be booking onto one of Matthew Palmer's virtual watercolour workshops. I do these pretty much every every weekend pretty much on a sunday this was the one from last sunday the 16th the badger in the bluebells the one coming up this weekend the 23rd as i am live um if you get yourself over to my website all the w's.watercolor.tv have a look at the top of the screen you see that button flashing that button will tell you the date of the up and coming workshop and it is on the 23rd of april using just three colors and three brushes the three brushes that we're using today you can paint a beautiful tuscan vineyard with stunning views in watercolor watch live or at any time that's the great thing about these uh, workshops you don't have to be there live and in person you can just you know enjoy them because once you buy a workshop a virtual workshop with me you can just watch it at your leisure so i spent a bit of time just sort of brushing in a bit of shape into the landscape here. Beautiful. Works nice. Again, we'll do some work on the cottage later. I, I've been very careful to avoid that cottage as much as I possibly can. Just to quickly touch on the water again. Let's get some green in there. Um, probably going to be a mix of the two greens. Not too strong here. A bit of a tap on tissue would be good as well. And then we'll do some horizontal lines of green from the edge. Now, with every brush, I'm lifting off and putting it on and going in one direction, as we mentioned a few times. But that will reflect that quite nicely there in that corner. Up here as well, but I will rotate the board for that. Starts to sort of bridge the gap between the water and the, and the little stream, the river, whatever it is. It like attaches the areas together and I'm looking forward to getting the reflection of the building and we'll, we will get to that. But if you look at that now you can see we've got a little hint of reflection. Always important to keep your lines nice and horizontal when you do this kind of work. Uh, we could sneak a bit of that in the background as well. Sharpen things up. Crisp things up a little bit. There's the grey. Beautiful natural grey. All the colours are co-branded Matthew Palmer SAA because I I design the colours in the SAA, manufacture them for me. And these have been around for a long time, these colours, and do enjoy them. They are basically, there's 14 colours in the range and they're all pre-mixed. They're all designed to replicate nature. There's a link in the description for this video where you can actually have a look at all the products if anything takes your fancy. Let's just come down here and get some darkness in. On the edge of the almost some shadows and various things so I'm working along the edge here and I'm sort of brushing it in because this paper has got a lovely texture to it as well so I'm not going to be too concerned about blending in because if the brush is slightly dry when I flick the brush upwards into the picture It'll sort of do the job for you. It'll, if you like it, it'll automatically sort all that out for you. It'll, it'll flick into the scene. And it'll become part of what's already there. Especially around these trees. I mean, you can have some real fun with darkness and of course later we're going to paint the trees in we're almost at that stage now i think to put the trees in. so that's just giving me a little bit of added contrast a little bit of shape and form um that kind of thing which is really nice 
Not there. While I've got this grey at hand, we can uh, make it a little bit stronger. Number six brush, beautiful tool for the job here. On the tissue. Look at the state of that. Now, if you'd like to win this piece of used professional artist kitchen paper, um, put your name and address on the back of a stamped addressed envelope and don't send it to me and we'll pick a winner. We'll recycle that. From pound shop, this is the problem, it's pound shop kitchen paper. Like the stronger grey. That little rotation I'm doing with my fingers, by the way, across the edge of the... Uh, Hello. It's just refining the tip, and there's now better than a refined tip. Let's pop in some little bits of uh, shadows going across the underneath of this building. Same here as well, beautiful shadow. Also, Down the edge of the chimney. Clean brush, a couple of quick taps on tissue, and then come back to that first one and just use water, nothing but water. And very, very simply, effort, I can't say this word, effort to, to this, 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 effort to this, this, just tap it on tissue and then blend it away. So you get that little bit of a setback. This is the extension. You wouldn't believe the amount of chaos they went into to get that extension. The planning permission to have an extension in an old cottage with a view like that was horrendous. You wouldn't believe it. That's the upstairs bathroom there. See you there? It's the upstairs toilet, lavatory, restroom, bathroom. You can tell because if you look close on the windowsill, if you look very close on that windowsill just there, can you see it? There's a knitted doll sat on a toilet roll. My grandma used to make them for charity. I remember it well. <laughs> Let's pop in. It's a bit surreal there today, isn't it? It's because the sun's out for the first time all year. Let's go a little bit stronger with the grey, folks, and let's make the doorway look as though it's um, open. When I was a boy, we never locked our doors, let me tell you. I'm just going to come down there. That one's probably a bit damp still. If you do an L shape, see the L shape, clean brush, a couple of taps on tissue, you can get that little bit of a sort of impression as though it's slightly open. Be a nice pub there, wouldn't it? Just make sure things are nice and dark around there. We get in there, folks. We get in there. What would make a good terracotta roof colour? Well, actually, natural orange, if you've got some natural orange. Or you can mix an orange quite easily, of course, from yellow and red. But if you've got some natural orange, which I've got here, um, it's like a ready-made sort of terracotta kind of colour. I'm going to use that. Um, beautiful. And what I'm going to do with that is painting the roof. in the direction now as i get towards the end of it the edge where it meets the other one slight tweak on color let me show you what's the tweak on color just going to pinch a bit of that brown that we used for the uh, the foreground so you get a little bit of natural brown that mixes with the orange beautiful and that'll give me a bit of variation you see can't go wrong can you bring it in you can sort of tuck it underneath and allow your colours to mix. Now these super point brushes are really nice because I can make use of the points. Again, all this is available online, folks. Where it meets the cottage, if you really want to impress your neighbours, then you want to add grey there because the grey would make it sit flush and have shadow. 
Can you see how I've got grey in there? Give it some character, brush it in a bit. Make it look as though it's got a bit of, you know, a bit of terracotta on the old chimney. Beautiful. And then of course we'll do the other roof with the orange. Leave the light edge. Super. So again, you can see I'm not concerned about being precise. As long as the brush strokes have some kind of a direction to them, it's going to work fine, you know? So that angle matches the original angle that we started off with. If it happens to leave a bit of light on the edge, it's all kind of part of it. Again, you can put a bit of brown in there for good measure. You can even get a bit of grey in there if you want to get a bit of... You know where the pigeons have been that kind of thing just a little bit of character and oomph and detail we're not trying to paint anything photographic here are we you know we're trying to do something that is easy not stressful i'm stressed you want to try and sit in here i'll get a bit of gray like watching paint dry i'll get the gray that's the same grey that we used for the um, the door and that, and that, that's a Darvish is saying, and that. We'll bring that in, in the form of L shapes. Make sure that's nice and dark in the tops of those, a bit of water. We're going to start to work on the trees next. We're going to flirt between the windows, sorry, the cottage and the, uh, that's the terracotta colour I'm using there, by the way. Nice little white cottage. Beautiful. We'll put some more work on that. You know, it's amazing what little things you can do on pictures like this. You know, a few little sort of terracotta plant pots. Steady on. You know, little bits of random stuff around there. If I drop a bit of grey in that, just to give it some little bit of clarity and stuff. It just all helps a bit of grey just to smudge it in a bit. But we'll do more work on that. That's just, that needs to stay there and be left to dry. Of course, I'm sure you're probably thinking if you've got a bit of random green left in your palettes, pretty sure we've got loads of that in there. Loads of it. Wrong camera. There we are. Pop some little bits of, stick some conifers on, that's what they are, a few conifers, stick them on there, just pop them on, can't go wrong, you know it just gives a bit of interest to the picture I always feel, we're going to do a lot more work in the background fields, hedgerows, that kind of thing, but coming back to the trees now that's how we're looking at the minute it's not looking bad is it quite pleased with that let's get a bit of extra horizontal lines in the water there just to give it a bit of extra flow we shall reflect the building in a minute or two we're going to do the trees next the birch trees love the birch trees um where you scraped off your plastic card effect on the the cliff side what you can actually do there is with the grey you can almost reflect that by adding some horizontal lines coming down across here now we are going to be giving this painting away a little bit later on and um, this is all going to be done via the SAA so do keep an eye out for the giveaway so we shall be giving this away at some point soon so do keep an eye on the facebook page and also on my facebook page matthew palmer artist make sure you follow that there's also a wonderful facebook group we've got going on called matthew palmer's watercolor group it's free to join just type in matthew palmer's watercolor group and you'll find it all on there that's all taking a nice bit of shape it's starting to mold together let's get the tape off now if you want to play it safe Peel it off like it's stuck to Matthew's hairy arm. 
you don't want to peel it off with passion. You can use a hair dryer to heat up the glue by the way and that will come off with ease but that should come off fairly okay. Um, if it starts to rip, I normally say go the opposite direction. Keep an eye on the back for any white bits that are coming off because that's where it starts to rip. There we go. So that's giving us the two blank areas and what we're going to do here folks is put the shadows on the dark side where's your light we've done that um on the left we've got the gray we've got the gray on the left don't be afraid of putting gray on okay um on these trees and this can go straight up the edge beautiful Ooh, that's the scary bit that's the noise people make at art groups when you put something dark on like that this is the Bob Ross moment. Put two happy trees on. Dark side. All trees have a dark side. Bring that in. Clean brush. Couple of taps on tissue. And then back into that first one. Just use water to smooth it all in. Like so. Same on this one. Bit of water for the job. And that'll make them look round. Now we will add a bit more detail to this right at the bottom of those two trees let's attach them and we can attach them by using the brown and the grey not together but separately we'll start with the brown like the dry brush on the tissue and you can sort of just get a little bit of messy brown stuff creeping in it helps to do this little bit of brown now because it's um dry uh, damp so the, it's kind of spreading you can see it spreading in it, it it gives a little bit of variation to the trees if you get that bit of brown in there doesn't want too much and then of course the grey would be going in as well you can even get a bit of a shadow just sweeping off to the, the left with some grey you basically want to make it all look really dark at the bottom there so there's no problems with the uh, shadows and levitating trees a few little bits of shadows around beautiful so it really attaches itself because the silver birch tree at the bottom would be very dark we're going to put some rings and some detail on um those trees but that is a blank canvas of tree which is which is fine um what i want to do next though is i want to bring in a little bit of detail some some finer branches so let's move on to branch and detail brushes we've got them here these are really nice rigger brushes you can see the small one is a rigger brush with a size 8 that's a reservoir that holds a lot of paint these are like having pens everybody loves the branch and detail brushes again have a look on the SA website just do a search of Matthew Palmer or have a look on the link for all the products we've been using if you like any of the products then check them out I want to mix grey with brown if you're not using these colours just add a bit more red and yellow to the brown and the idea is that you load up the reservoir so it means that the brush paints forever it paints for ages because in here it's full of colour and it's feeding that tip and it's like, oh, honestly beautiful brushes these love these brushes and we'll get some branches on weaving across coming out from the tree look beautiful look at this really effective way of creating nice branches make sure the colour is dark enough there and the branches would be a lot darker in the trunk we're going to add shadows and things to these don't worry but a nice branch you paint them in the direction they grow and because we're doing a vignette here folks we can literally afford to have the branches going out the page look how nice they are it's always a pleasure to use these brushes Matthew Palmer branch in detail brush do check them out folks I bet a lot of you've already got these they've been around quite some years but look how such a nice thing to do there aren't they um when it comes to doing detail and various things how effective they are a 
just add as many or as few of these as you like. Don't be afraid to get them weaving behind the tree. Bring them right over. Really effective, yeah? Nice, easy, simple way of creating trees, branches. And a normal rigger brush will obviously do it fine, but the advantage of the branching detail brush is that the brush will paint for long periods without need of reload. Because that's the issue you get with a normal brush, that you have to reload it every so often. Um, and life's too short for reloading your brush. <laughs> that and cutting the grass that I discovered yesterday. So you can see. And the brown is just natural. I've mixed it with the grey. Beautiful. Get a few branches over here. I love the fact that you can, on these vinaigrette vignettes, you can get them coming outside of the picture here. Nice little twigs, rotating the brush to a more comfortable angle when you do these trees. Um, really makes it work. Browns, reds and greens all work well together. And of course we've got a bit of red in the sky. We've got a bit of red in the, the brown mix as well. Because if you're mixing your own brown, you'd mix an orange with lots of red. And you drop a little bit of blue in it. But look how beautiful them branches are. Stunning. Of course, we'll put some foliage over the top of this, but I'm just going to use a slightly dry brush here to attach the branches to the tree. I feel like we need a couple more branches just sneaking up from here, coming over the top there. Maybe one or two coming up there as well. That's probably enough. You can always add more later. But what I want to do is just lightly flick the brush so it attaches to the birch tree. But the smallest one of the fantastic brushes with that same colour, let's make it a little bit more brown actually. A bit more brown on the tissue there so it's very dry. Okay, you've got that lovely spiky edge. Well, we can utilise that spiky edge and we can make these trees have a little bit of shape and form. So we can just go in and pop some little little rings of the birch tree. Make sure you tap off the excess on the tissue. And you can use this lovely spiky fantastic brush to create a gorgeous effect of the bark of the birch tree. texture of the tree. I'm just going to use a size 6 brush now with the same colour. Just add a bit of dry brush to the bottom with the grey. Sorry, not the grey, but the same colour. Just gives a little bit extra detail to that area. Grounds the tree. Utilising the grain of the paper here, look, we can add A bit of dry brush. Same time, we can put some bearded chuffs in the sky as well. Lovely. While we've got this little brush and the grey, let's paint in the windows. On the building. Just little spots, like little dominoes, I suppose, keeping it simple. There you go, we'll even pop a little, little recess down one side there. Let's have a bench, shall we? Should we have a bench? Let's have a bench over here. Bench. Little bench. Just sort of going off the edge of the paper there. 
be fair, that bench has seen better days. I want to use this brush as well and paint in some really fine distant hills, fields, hedgerows is what I'm sort of referring to. So following the shape of these hillside, I'd use either this or the branching detail brush. This is the small small super point I'm using, but there's hardly any paint on the brush as I do this. Pretty little trees and things. We go a little bit lighter with the colour. I can add some to this area too. But very, very dry. So all the time I've got the tissue here just to tap away that excess. Creates more more depth, more shadow, a few sheep on the field there, so you can see you've got that nice little sort of distant almost out of focus kind of thing going off there, brilliant, it just helps to give clarity. I've got a scrap piece of paper here, well that's good for you Mr Palmer, I'm, I'm pleased for you, this is like the back of an old Thing from writing the book or something well pop that on there and we mentioned the tree and texture brushes this is the small one i've got here and if you've not got these you could just use any old brush and sort of stipple the bristle a little bit and if we take a bit of green natural green the darker green here mm. bit of a tap on tissue so this is a tree and texture brush if you notice the hair, it's got a taller side to it. If I use the brush with the tall hairs at the bottom, so the writing is actually facing underneath. So the brush is kind of upside down. We can make use of this. And we can do a little bit of a hedgerow or something, just to give a bit of clarity onto the cottage there. We'll leave a gap for a gateway. Or any supermarket will do. Leave a gap. Take that across. You can see what it's done. And then I want to go actually up the edge of the cottage there. And do a little bit of a bush or something, just some sort of you see how that's kind of slotted in at the back? Uh, that, that little bit of a bit of a hedgerow. You can do the same one there as well, actually. Make sure there's no paint on the back. A little bit of a tree or something just at the back of the cottage there. It helps to position it all in, really. Now, I would simply just grab that branching detail brush. It's ready and waiting for me. It's already got the colour on, I think. Well, I, I can reload it if I'm doing the trees and things. Trees. I'll put a little gateway in, some little fence posts, this will help to give scale this you know, just sort of poking out from the top of the the, um, the gate there and then we'll put the gate in. Now this is going to be a five bar gate. If you look really close, you can see a little bird perched on there. That's another little bearded chuff. We'll do a little bit of a track. These little bits aren't important, but I always think that these are the little bits that make the pictures work, you know? Can you see them little bits of, like a little, little trackway just sneaking through there? Nice. Lovely. Uh, take a bit of green on that super point brush because I feel that we should add some slightly greener hedgerows. A few spots and dots around which will connect to these.
and give us a lovely effect of depth because what it'll do is it'll connect these areas into background Pop it on. I've enjoyed just for a change just sat down literally with a white piece of paper here and just created this mess from nothing and that's what it's been that's what this picture has been it's it's just been creating something from nothing folks and that to me is a very enjoyable thing if you've never tried it before just get yourself a white bit of paper and crack on with it and just have a go have a little go at doing it and see how you feel i'm just going to do a little bit of a some sort of greenery just on the edge there whether it's some sort of climbing rose or something i don't know but it just wants something around that bench there just to finish the picture off might just be a little bit of a get close in for that for you just to finish that area off should i say i'm gonna do a little bit more on the trees in a minute but that'll give us a really nice natural way to finish the painting off in that position you know it just sort of fades into nothing over there it just sort of does its thing if you like and that's always a good thing to do on your paintings there really nice uh, i'm just pottering um the darkness that's on that branching detail brush is also going to be very useful for adding little bit of gutter in weirdly it does make a difference now in a few little lines on the edge of the cottage because this is like having a pen in your hand these brushes are stunning you should get yourself some of these Pop a little bit of a drain pipe on there. What? You heard me. A few little bits of things around. If I had more time, I'd paint a wheelie bin. Wheelie? I mean, these little bits on the building do make a difference, don't they? These little bits of interest detail. So really cool. Um, back to the trees um, and reflection. Let's just do a quick reflection of the building here. So if I get this scrap piece of paper here, let me just turn it that way a bit. Pop this on the edge right there, like so. And if we just use a bit of green from the palette and just put some green like so. That will give the edge of the building. I could do the same here, but there I would use grey, not green. It's just a suggestion, you know. It it's one of them little things that you can see where the building like reflects now, can't you? You could do a similar thing with a silver birch tree, but we'll do that in a slightly different way. So if we come back to the whole picture, we can see that this thing is taking a lovely shape now. Um, just a few little finishing touches, folks, on here. A little bit of darkness on there. What I want to do is just use a pale grey. Just add a few shadows into the birch tree, like little sort of diagonal shadows. A couple of those in the cottage as well. Cast shadows from somewhere, maybe. Little bits of little bits of random grey, just to sort of take the harsh whiteness away. These little random dots and spots. If I get a bit of water on the brush, you can just encourage them in. And these could be shadows from passing clouds or shadows from whatever, you know, just a bit of dirt in the building or something like that. It all makes a difference. But let's come back to the brush that we started off with, which was the fantastic brush right here. And it's probably a bit dry now, but if we take some of the green, the 
greens again. So again, one side dark, other side light. Give it a bit of a squash in the palette. That's probably about where we want to be actually. You can see it's all nice and spiky. We can just add a little bit of foliage over the top of the tree right here. And that will just give me those last few. I mean, literally, I mean, look at that brush. You can see, can't you, just how spiky it is. These are Matthew Palmer fantastic brushes. These are lovely for doing lots of things. Trees is just one example. Great for doing animal fur, like the badger I showed you. Be lovely for doing the whiskers and the fur on this 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 badger here. And again, little bits of foliage. And this is really going to embed the tree now. Just going to push it all in, really bring it together nice. You can see that, hopefully. Just little gentle taps, nothing major, but it's putting the leaf over the top of the tree. Super stunning thing to do that, really nice, love them brushes, um, do make sure you check them out. Um, okay, so, where's my little brush? I'm looking, there it is, I'm looking for my number six brush, someone's pinched it, bit of grey. That bloke, Albert, it's not me. A little bit of reflection of the doorway, the window, just sneaking in just there. If we use the grey, slightly dry brush and spike it, you can add some depth to your water as well. So you put some downward lines in your water to create a lovely sense of depth from these areas. Really effective way of creating a lovely drop to water you can see how it creates like a a depth effect if we mix some of the grey and brown together which is what we used on the uh, silver birch tree what dry brush it and what we can actually do is do a little reflection of that tree so just make sure you line it up out here and then just do some little Horizontal lines. Same for that one. That one goes off on an angle, remember? It's the same angle that you do. The same pitch, but mirrored. So it, it just gives that nice little bit of a, a drop there. A few little bits of darkness on the edge here as well. Nice, nice um, detailed demo. And uh, as always, Every little helps. I think we're just about there with this. We'll pop in a few little. Stop the children falling in the river. Pop a little, little bit of a fence there to give a bit of depth. Nice. Okay. Um, now, if you've got one hanging around your studio, I normally have a few of these knives craft knives I and mean, some of these are getting a bit beyond repair to be honest they're not very sharp that one's okay if you've got a craft knife it's quite nice in your water to scrape, scrape away some horizontal especially where the water meets the And of course, you could really scrape away the light side of the birch tree as well. But it, it puts like a bit of sparkle on. It does, a nice bit of sparkle. Lovely. It's a little bit blank in the middle. The painting that is, not me. I'm just going to use a very pale grey. Just pop in a few little horizontal lines across there, just to sort of sort of bridge the gap, if you like. And then what we'll do here is we'll pop a signature just here in the corner. Now I want to sign this one, Vincent Van Gogh. It's worth millions. I'm not encouraging that sort of behaviour. 
we'll sign it in a few palm instead and what we'll do is there's no finer at the end of a good painting section session than getting mounted is they do you know what i'm saying what a, what a difference pop that on there come back a little bit with the old camera and we'll take a look at that now I've made a lovely little vignette looking back at the picture for a second there we're just going to have a little look at doing a couple of scratches in the silver birch tree because that will give an added bit of how nice that is that little bit of a scratch it just puts a bit of light in your trees you know where the branches actually come into the tree they're using a bit of a craft knife you can just sort of have a bit of a scrape it So a big thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. That was a wonderful painting to do. I thoroughly enjoyed that. The whole scenes come together really nice and such a nice all rounder from the sky to the trees to the water to the building. I love that little bit of detail that came at the end as well. And of course, if you're new to me, uh, do make sure you hit the subscribe button because that will keep you informed and get that notification bell as well. Thank you very much, folks, and I'll see you very, very soon. And don't forget, coming up on the 23rd of April 2023 we have a watercolour workshop, a live workshop where you can sit along, paint along at home in real time um, or you can do it at any time because these are yours to keep once you purchase them um, taking place on the 23rd of April we have a beautiful Tuscan vineyard with stunning views in watercolour um, the up and coming workshop will always be on the home page of the website just click on the link at the, at the big button at the top and that will show you where to go